Yellow. Supposedly these are the accurate increments for the heights of both Canelo Alvarez and Callum Smith, although they are listed otherwise. Many fighters like to give a different measurement to throw their opponents off when the actual fight happens. Nonetheless though, this book does reinforce a deeper truth in regards to the nature of our reality. There may be an inherent advantage to possessing attributes, you know, one attribute versus another, but this is once again an example of how it's more a matter of how well you can play your game, all the while avoiding your opponent's game. Now when it comes to someone like say, Manny Pacquiao, he has a knack for using your own reach against you. He doesn't force his way into his reach, but more so, he times against your strikes which in turn also gives him a measuring stick, a gauge for distance while he strikes against your window of recovery. This is the reverse philosophy prescribed to smaller fighters. Typically, when getting picked apart at a reach, the ideology is to consistently make your way into space so that you aren't consistently touched up unpunished. Canelo Alvarez, on the other hand, he's a blend between these two understandings, where he places himself just within your reach, but he doesn't force his way in. He's just an offensive high work rate counter puncher. He places the target closely in front of you, but is always ready to evade if you are to attempt touching him. From there, if he starts to get a feel for your strike, he either uses head movement or an angle in order to connect with his own reach. Thus, when you start to become tentative, if he feels that, Inaction in and of itself is an action. He too will time that decision when present. Now, look at Canelo Alvarez's feet right here. Throughout the course of this fight, Canelo's lead foot has been pointing at Callum Smith's center line. This means he's either planning on banging with him or pressuring with the threat so that he can bait a strike to counter against. Naturally, because of Canelo's lower center of gravity, his attributes inherently will provide him with a speed advantage. He'll be able to more proficiently use head movement and footwork to time against reactions he reads in that tension. The more the pressure builds up, the more reactions will occur, the more he will have to read. And the more he reads, the more he picks up a feel on, the more confident he gets in his own timing. That's what he's doing. He's walking Callum Smith down, putting him on the back foot by pressuring Callum with the possibility of a real threat. When his foot does move out the point at his opponent's lead foot, this is where he becomes more defensive instead. That's just it. Canelo moves towards the center line from the lead foot pointing at his opponent's lead foot, innately moving in a diagonal. But versus this bigger opponent, he stays measured, patient, dangling real potential for harm right in front of him. What he lacks in reach, he has in patience, balance, and reaction time. Like Mike Tyson, in this way, what was once an inherent advantage is now working as a disadvantage because Canelo Alvarez isn't playing checkers, he's playing chess. Shorter stature, lower center of gravity, balance advantage, he's making his way into his reach methodically, making Callum Smith hesitant about using his own reach too recklessly. He can't just use his reach just like that anymore. He doesn't have that stick he can casually put in Canelo's face. Any mistake on this level will have a good chance of being punished. The moment the punch is missed, right then and there, Canelo has gained the space to leverage his own strike. That's one of the most amazing things about Canelo. Canelo Alvarez is just so confident with pressure. He just has so much trust in his skills and his ability that even in a dangerous situation versus a much bigger man, he doesn't overreact. He's calm, confident, focused in that pressure awaiting his next best move. This is what makes Canelo Alvarez so very special. And this is an example of what we perceive to be an inherent disadvantage into a straight up advantage. With the high pressure Mexican style, lynching with a high guard, able to break from that shell into head movement, swinging big powerful shots the style is renowned for. He's just a balance between the brawler and technician clearly. You could hear the body shots echo on connection. You could see the breaks in composure written on Callum's reaction as the strikes added up. Truly, Canelo was eating him up. What started off with some level of respect, a respect for the attributes Callum possessed, started to snowball more and more into domination favoring Canelo. It's just time with the truth. Truth is a very difficult, a very painful substance to grasp. But the one who wields it, if they are strong enough, if they do not falter under its weight, they are the ones who rise to the top. Even when Callum Smith realized he had to do something in return, Canelo, he was just too slick. He didn't panic. 
He was just composed, thus responded to each millisecond with the right decision, thus the pressure was methodically reapplied. Just look at that reaction time, going in with his own strike. There isn't a moment of hesitation. Instantly, Canelo Alvarez lowers his elbow to block the strike. Here, Canelo does something often advised against. He turns his head away from the strike. Why can he do this and get away with it? Why can he take his eyes off his opponent for a brief moment? It's because he understands the window so intuitively. He has such a firm feel for how a punch works and the options available after one that he can instantly retract knowing where the next threat will be. Just look at that. Even without looking, he instantly knew how he'd have to guard in order to defend the next strike. Pumping the jab, maintaining a slight space between the gloves. Boom. Guard splitting uppercut. Canelo Alvarez is straight up bullying Callum Smith in there. Haymaker. If he knows your tendencies to shell up high, he has many options to deal with that guard. His style is heavily predicated on forcing you to shell, having you defend one way with one part of a combination, only to fire a much heavier investment in another direction. Which is why. Body shots are so staple to Canelo Alvarez, but here, like Gervonta Davis or Naya Inoue, if you keep using that shell in response to the telegraph, Canelo, he can wind up even more and straight blast you through the guard. That's the pitch of a baseball straight through the guard. Callum felt that for sure. And of course the punch we all remember from the fight. This symbolizes exactly what Canelo Alvarez is. He doesn't spam haymakers. They aren't mindless. That's not what he's doing. He wants you to react to his telegraph. And in doing so, you give him a predictable pattern to time against. Where you're going to show this, where you will be open, how you will be open. In this instance, Canelo Alvarez throws his right up high as he slips down low. In magic, they will call this misdirection. With the slip. Canelo Alvarez now has a line for an uppercut, right through the middle. Callum Smith on the other hand, just look, he doesn't really know what's happening. He's completely caught off guard, thus without his focus in the right place, he instinctively opens up his guard for a body shot. Boom. That's the game Canelo plays with these powerful wider shots. If you think it's a body shot and you start moving your elbows out to guard, that's where the space is granted for an uppercut instead. What a remarkable performance. You would never guess Canelo Alvarez will crush this man with his sheer attributes when leveraging and remaining composed to the correct understandings, the correct implementation of his own physical aptitudes. And when you understand, you realize that this is a truth that applies to the world regardless of arena. When a tall fighter wins, he's winning not because he's tall, it's because he has self-awareness. He knows how to correctly leverage his attributes better than their opponents know how to deal with it. Now even with different variables, this is the exact same truth that applies to Canelo Alvarez, Miyamoto Musashi. The important thing in strategy is to suppress the enemy's useful actions, but allow his useless actions. That's just it. Canelo is very self-aware. He knows what his strengths are and what he has to do to leverage those strengths all the while, suppress or use his opponent's advantages against him. And so, let this be a lesson in life. Sure, you may have to work harder to leverage your innate and inherent advantages. You may have to try harder, work more, but every person has an inherent advantage for their disadvantage. The question then becomes, how can I take what I am given, then use that to work in my favor? Not every game is the best for every individual. There is no fixed formula. Instead, to figure out what the best game is for you and to just play it, that is the game of life. You can't just follow a narrative that says you're incapable, that you aren't worthy. No, that's completely wrong. It's just the path presented may just not be the best fit. That simply means you have to adjust and find a better game more suited to your attributes, more suited to your individual condition. That's exactly what we can learn from this. You aren't too short, you aren't too tall, you aren't too dumb. You just aren't playing the right game. This is an understanding true regardless of arena, thus to that end. Thank you, Canelo Alvarez and Callum Smith for this lesson. If you like more from me, please subscribe and hit the notifications. Thank you if you did, it truly does mean a lot to me. Thank you. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. It's good karma and until next time.
Peace.